A message from a higher power, exploding gas tanks, and making Whoopi with Whoopi. All the evidence indicates that it hasn't always been smooth sailing for the cast of CSI. William Peterson played perhaps the most recognizable morgue employee on CSI crime scene investigation, the alliteratively named Gil Grissom. He starred on CSI from the show's first episode in 2000 up through 2009, when he decided to step away. He explained the decision to walk away to CNN, saying, It's CSI, they pay me a lot of money, and I don't have to work very hard anymore. I've got it all figured out, and I just realized, God, as an artist, I'm going to atrophy. Still though, Grissom returned when CSI decided to return as CSI Vegas, and Peterson told Outsider that returning to the character that made him famous was as natural as could be, saying, It's like riding a bicycle, you know? Back in 2004, Peterson told Playboy about a frightening incident early in his career that nearly sent him to the morgue himself. After an onset accident left him bleeding and blacked out, recalling, I could hear the doctors working on me, saying that they had lost my vital signs. I was on the all that jazz escalator with a long tunnel and a lot of white light. Then I specifically remember a dominant male voice saying, It's not your time, get off the escalator. The experience, Peterson says, reassured him that there is life after death, though he said most people he's told about the near death experience didn't believe him. We're genetically hardwired to believe living forces that we cannot see. Ted Danson joined the cast of CSI in its 12th season, playing new team leader D.B. Russell for three seasons before jumping ship to CSI Cyber when the flagship show ended. This meant that Danson led the cast during the show's 300th episode, and he told The Killing Times that the show was still on the air and was still successful because it was still as good as it was when it began, reflecting, It's a really tight ship and it's really well done, and people still are enjoying it all around the world, so I am really, really, really proud to be part of the show. Before he was a crime scene investigator, Danson was a Cheers vet who came from a troubled tabloid past. When his first wife, Casey Coates, gave birth to their first child, she experienced a stroke that resulted in the left side of her body being paralyzed. Danson left acting for a while to care for her, telling people, It was horrifying, but after you get over the shock, you roll up your sleeves and work at getting things better. Though he supported her for a while, Danson ultimately had a highly publicized affair with actor and comedian Whoopi Goldberg, ending his marriage to Coates. He admitted to people, We're adjusting to the fact that we aren't the same people we were before this happened. Robert David Hall played Dr. Al Robbins for an astounding 328 episodes of CSI, starting off as a recurring character before becoming a regular. Speaking with the CSI Files fan site, Hall joked that although his coroner character loves his job, he kept it at the whim of CSI's writers and producers, later clarifying, the actor RDH loves going to work and enjoys the cast, crew, and staff so much. He hopes we go 20 seasons. That was not to be the case, but the actor did bring Doc Robbins back for CSI Immortality, the TV movie that closed out the series. Like his character, Hall is a double amputee in real life, and he uses prosthetic legs. He lost his legs in a car accident involving a semi-truck that jumped a highway median, crushing the actor. I was driving a little foreign car, and the uh, guy ran right over me, and I should have been dead, but I survived. As he recalled in an interview with Ability Magazine, I knew I was injured, but I didn't know quite where I was. I figured something really horrible had happened, and then my gas tank exploded. The strength he gained from his tragedy helped him face the pressures of the entertainment industry head-on. He recalled a conversation in an interview with AARP where someone told him about being afraid of a certain casting director who they thought was tough. Hall recalled saying, I've always thought I was burned over 60% of my body and lost two legs. How bad can a casting director be compared to that? Elizabeth Shue played Julie Finlay, the assistant night shift supervisor in the Las Vegas crime lab on CSI for four seasons of the iconic show between 2012 and 2015. The year she joined the show, she told the Columbus Dispatch, I'm very grateful to be working. I'm always grateful. And the older you get, you get more grateful and appreciative. Shu first got famous in the 80s, starring in films like the Back to the Future sequels, The Karate Kid, and Adventures in Babysitting. The actor experienced a tragedy in the late 80s when her older brother Will died in a shocking accident, resulting from a fall from a tire swing. According to Healing, Advice for Recovering Your Inner Strength and Spirit from the World, Elizabeth witnessed her brother's death, 
and for a long time she struggled to deal with the loss, reflecting, What happened to Will taught me that human beings are fragile. His death taught me not to be afraid anymore of who I was. She also recalled attending therapy to help her deal with the situation, which she now considers, quote, the first huge step I took in my life. Elizabeth and her surviving brother Andrew turned to their pain into art, with the release of 2007 film Gracie, which was based on their lives and their relationship with their brother. Mark Helgenberger is one of the most recognizable actors on CSI, having led the show for its first 12 seasons as Catherine Willows before stepping back. Telling The Hollywood Reporter at the time, I instinctively felt it was time to end that chapter of my career. I'm 53 now, and I feel like I'm still young enough to switch it up. She did, however, continue to appear sporadically throughout the rest of the show's original run, and according to Deadline, she will bring Catherine back on the rebooted CSI Vegas in 2022. Offscreen, the actor has been a fierce advocate for breast cancer awareness since learning that her mother was sick. The star turned to advocacy as a way to heal, as she recalled to NBC News. To this day, I remember exactly how I felt when she told me, and how her strength and determination to beat this disease was incredibly empowering. Her mother's diagnosis affected everyone in the Helgenberger clan. The CSI star told SurvivorNet that she watched her father break down over the news, saying, He was obviously just distraught and terrified that he was going to lose the love of his life and the mother of his children. It was brutal. Her mother survived several years with the disease but eventually passed away in 2021. Lawrence Fishburne is one of the biggest stars to ever join the cast of CSI. After playing Morpheus in The Matrix and before his role as Pops on Blackish, Fishburne recurred on CSI for 61 episodes between 2008 and 2011. His role as Raymond Langston, a CSI at the Vegas Crime Lab, was actually Fishburne's first long-term experience on television, which he told Deadline was a good chance to expand his knowledge of entertainment. He said, It was also an opportunity for me to learn, as a producer, the television business a little better because I was certainly unfamiliar with the workings of television from the business side. He added that his production company got blackish off the ground when he left the crime drama. In his personal life, Fishburne and his wife Gina Torres were together for many years, seeming like one of Hollywood's most stable couples for 14 years, even starring together on Hannibal. However, they tragically split in 2017, although Torres insisted that the breakdown of their marriage was as good-natured as could be. Telling US Weekly, There are no bad guys here. Only a love story with a different ending than either one of us had expected. Fishburne officially filed for divorce several months later, and according to Radar, everything was finalized the following year. Gary Dordan's CSI character Warwick Brown was part of the crew at the Vegas Crime Lab for the show's first eight seasons. However, according to TV Guide, failed contract negotiations led to the end of Dordan's time on the show, and Warwick was killed off in the season 8 finale. Though you might think eight seasons on a highly successful network show would be enough to set an actor up for life, it seems that Dordan had not been saving his money. 20 bucks. By an end of shift, I'm the man. Is there anything you won't bet on? No. Nah. Within a few years of departing CSI after a string of legal troubles, TMZ reported that the actor filed for bankruptcy. According to documents filed in court, Dordon claimed that his disposable income added up to a mere $321 a month after all of his bills were paid. According to a Page Six report, the actor apparently blamed his lack of funds on his character's death, meaning that he couldn't return to the show to recoup the fame and wealth that had come with the part for his first few years on television. Thankfully, he seems to have turned his career around. Dordon had had recurring roles throughout the 2010s on shows like Being Mary Jane, and more recently, he starred in the movie Redemption Day, 